In this video, I will talk about limited dependent variable models and how to estimate them in Stata. These models include the Tobit model, the truncated regression, and the Heckman selection model. Before you view this video, please make sure that you have watched my other two videos on this topic. So I have opened up the Stata program here and I have already executed it. And here we have data on ambulatory expenditures. And this will be a dependent variable that we want to explain. And independent variables would be age, female, and total number of chronic conditions. So I will open up the data so you can take a look. And here is age. This is a one of our independent variables. We have female and we have total number of chronic conditions. And our dependent variable, which is the one of interest here, is this one, ambulatory expenditures. And you can see it's positive values, but for some of them it's zero. And that's why we have, uh, here we have censoring and truncation at zero. And we don't have any other limit here. Okay, so we've read in the data and we defined our y variables and x variables. So when you uh, do your own, uh, uh, when you modify this program, the only thing you have to change is just read in your data and where is your located and then change the y and x variables and the rest should work. The first thing to do is summarize the data by describing it. Uh, and you can see there are no labels in this data set. And here are the summaries. And we can see that the mean ambulatory expenditure is $1,386. So you can also summarize the Y variable, which is of interest in detail. And you can also summarize the Y variable if the Y variable is positive in, de in detail. So here is the one. So here we have the censored sample because we have the zeros in the data and here we don't have the zeros in the data. We only summarize those with positive values and you can see like the smallest observation starts from 1, 2, 3 and 4 whereas here our smallest are zeros. And so the number of observation here is 3,328 whereas here it drops to 2,802. And look at the mean where here is lower than here. Why? Because we have zeros in here and we eliminated the zeros. Therefore, we would have a higher mean for the truncated sample than the censored sample. Okay, the next thing we're doing is we're generating a dummy zero one variable for when the dependent variable is positive and we would use it later on in the model. The next thing to do is estimate a simple regression model of y variables and then x variables. And these are the results here. We would concentrate on the Tobit model where it has very simple commands. Tobit, you put the y variable in here, then you list all of your independent variables in here. And then you have to put comma lower limit of zero because we have zeros in the data. Now. Sometimes if your data is limited from above, you could put, um, look at this line here that I have um, commented out, but you can put here the upper limit of 10,000, or you can just put the upper limit if you don't have zeros in the data. So make sure that for the Tobit model, you have specified the lower or the upper limit, and you put them as to what makes sense in your data. So looking at the results here, uh, we can interpret those coefficients and for example we would say that with each additional year of age we have about three hundred and thirty three dollars more in latent ambulatory expenditures because the Tobit model has this latent variable as the dependent variable and you can also note that the sigma parameter here is estimated which is needed for the Tobit model and again uh, here you see 526 are left censored observations at zero. And then you have 
the uncensored observations being the majority of, of, of the sample. The next thing to do is uh, estimate a Tobit model marginal effects for the censored sample and that's accomplished by margins comma dy dx at means and then we would predict y star so this would be for the censored uh, sample and we would have um, we would have the results listed right here so how would you interpret this coefficient here now we have that if individuals are older by one year, they would have $220 more in actual ambulatory expenditures. So this now are for the censored sample because we are also including the zeros in there. For the truncated sample, we have same command as before, except that predicting Y star, we would just be predicting the expected, um, the expected value for the truncated sample. And that would be the expected value of the y variable given that y is positive. And the way to interpret this number is that if individuals are older by one year, they would have 154 in additional ambulatory expenditures for those that have positive ambulatory expenditures because in the truncated sample, there are no longer zeros in the data. So you need to say for those that have positive expenditures. So notice here one interesting thing is that the margin effect is the largest for the latent variable, the first one that we had before, then smaller for the censored sample, and then the smallest for the truncated sample here. So this was the one-step Tobit model where the, continue, the discrete decision of zero or positive expenditures and the quantity of the positive expenditures are lumped up together. So if we want to split this Tobit model we, in two-step uh, model, we are going to use the Craig's model and we would have as a first step the probit of y and x. Notice that the probit here is automatically assumes that that's a zero one variable. And here we would interpret this that people that have higher age, they're female and with more uh, chronic conditions, they are more likely to be in the positive amounts of the ambulatory expenditures. And for the second step is to estimate a truncated regression where you have the y variable and the x variable with lower limit of zero. So for the truncated regression, if you're noticing here at the results, we have the number of observations, 2,802. So it's only using the truncated sample, not the full sample. And here it assumes that the lower bound is zero, the upper bound is infinity. And again, for the truncated one, you can put the upper limit here if you want to. So um, again, um, these are the coefficients here. And the marginal effects you calculate in a very simple way uh, by using margins at the means. Basically, it's exactly the same command that we have up here for the Tobit model. And here, using the two-step or model and the truncated regression as the second step, we're getting that each additional year of age brings 196. Uh, more dollars into ambulatory expenditures for those that have positive expenditures. So notice that in this case we still have positive and significant coefficients here. They didn't change sign, but it doesn't have to necessarily be the case. Sometimes you split those decisions into two with the probit and the truncated regression model and you can have completely different results here, not significant opposite signs and so on. So here is a, a test for the Tobit versus the combination of a probit and truncated regression model. You first quietly estimate the Tobit model, we did that before, and you save the log likelihood, here the LL, the log likelihood, as this um, value here, then you estimate the probit, you save the log likelihood, then estimating the truncated regression, then you save the log likelihood, 
And here's the test statistic where you have two times you pick up the log likelihood for the probit and the truncated to subtract the tobit, and then here it is displayed here, and that number is uh, 3,700. And if you compare that to the critical value for the chi-square uh, distribution with the, let's see, it would be four degrees of freedom because we have three variables plus the inter intercept, then we have that it's rejected, therefore, we have that it's appropriate to use the two-step model, the Craig's model, instead of the one-step topic model. The final thing that I have on here is how to do a Heckman two-step selection uh, regression. And here we have the Y list and X list. That's the second or the, the, um, the, uh, the regression equation, the outcome equation. And the select is the first step where you need dy. Remember how dy we calculated it up here. That's a zero one variable for whether the dependent variable is a zero or a positive amount. And then you have the x list. And then you put here two step two step model. So this one is a probit model where you have a zero one for the zero positives. And this is the second step where you have the outcomes. And in this case, I have put the same x variables in both cases, but that doesn't have to be the case. You could, you could put different variables affecting the two decisions. And then you can also calculate the marginal effect. So these are the estimations for the Heckman selection uh, model. And again, you can see these are the results from the probit model that we considered before. And here's the two-step, um, the, the second step um, estimates for the outcome variable. And here we have the margins as well. So for the marginal effects that we can say an additional year of age leads to 157 more uh, dollars after correcting for the representativeness and for those that have positive ambulatory expenditures. So thank you for watching. This video was on how to do limited dependent variable models in Stata.